Well, fine. Good afternoon, all. This is Patricia, and I'm traveling for history. We're about to enter the Holly House, which is on the National Register of Historic Places because this was a ferry crossing. And you see how thick the stone is. Holy cow, it's crazy thick. Wow. Now, the space can be rented for events, and uh, today I'm lucky enough to be able to be inside. I'd like to thank Houston, who is the uh, uh, seasonal campground um, employee who uh, offered to open up the building for me, well, for us. And a uh, huge thank you to Houston. Should you be watching it, I would truly appreciate it that you uh, let me in. Beautiful fireplace. shallow, though it is somewhat large. This makes me wonder if they used it for cooking purposes. Let's see what the, oops, let's just do it this way. No, can't see anything. All right. Never mind on that one. Beautiful space, though. I mean, look at these thick walls. I suppose if you were under attack, you wouldn't have to worry about people getting in. Ah, here we go. Ferry across the lake. Let me go ahead and read that to you. Kingsland Bay, uh, Kingsland Bay's protected harbor proved an excellent location for the establishment of a ferry landing. The lake was relatively narrow and an equally sheltered accessible harbor lay in New York State. Roger A. Hearn operated the first ferry, the sailing sailboat, in 1805 and in 1813 Pearson Isaac Hawley assumed control of the operation. The ferrying rights were eventually purchased by Samuel Strong in 1820, and a technological change occurred with a two-horse ferry coming into service. The ferry continued to run through the early 1840s when other crossings of Basin Harbor to the south and Charlotte to the north achieved dominance. And up here, we have a, a likeness of, uh, of one of those two-horse boats. It says here, notice is hereby given that the horse boat which crosses Lake Champlain at the ferry from Ferrisburg, Vermont, to Grog Harbor, New York, is now in good repair. She will continue to run from this time until the lake shall be closed by ice. The prices of ferriage, the same as heretofore, charged. Mr. Harry Warner keeps the stone house on the Vermont side of the lake, where the traveler will find good accommodations. Samuel Strong and James Whalen, proprietors, for Jen, June 24, 1823. So, if you're wondering about a horse boat, a horse ferry, it's the way they powered the boat. The uh, horse would walk a treadmill, and the uh, treadmill uh, worked a tread wheel. Another lovely fireplace. I'm hoping that to uh, uh, turn the Diane to look up. There we go. That's a little better, isn't it? Oops, isn't it now? Let me just get a picture of that. Huh. I do like when the I get that right. Interesting photos on the walls. We have uh, swimmers here doing something. People are working on building sailboats, apparently. Children, I think those are children. Yeah, I think those are kids. Uh, more photos over here. No swing. Swimmers. One 
sometimes I just use it as summer camp. And over here, farm through the years. During the 19th century, the land was constantly under agricultural production. After the Holly family departed, the property was owned by Isaac Satterley um, of the entire property in two separate purchases, 1849 to 56. In 1860, Abraham Hiram Kingsland, their tenure gave the bay its present name. 1871, Olmsted Keeler. 1901, Father Pierre Campo opens up new chapter in the area's history. So this is the father. And maybe you'll be able to read that on your own. Monastery of Madonna Point, Father Pierre Campo, the Roman Catholic parish priest from Virgins, purchased the property, including the stone house, in 1901. For nearly two decades, relatives and he managed a monastic retreat, converting the second floor ballroom into a chapel and adding a three-story bell tower, which altered the ag architectural integrity of the stone structure. Wow. Mm, that's kind of Hard to read. I know it's not very clear. And then we have here the French language summer camp. Starting in 1924, under the management of the McDonough Point Corporation and direct guidance of Dr. Edward D. Collins, a Col Champlain, provided an interesting niche for girls and boys interested in learning French. The summer camp featured regular camp activities in swimming, boating, horseback riding, theater, indoor and outdoor games, and an entire French-speaking atmosphere. During the camp's operation, many camp buildings were constructed on the grounds, some of which still stand today. The camps were spent in operations in 1974. It's hard to imagine that was 50 years ago, but here we are. So that explains all the camp activity. Uh, the word école in French means school. Isn't this a lovely room? And the view, it isn't in the fireplace. Oh yeah, sure, let's, let's go ahead and look up because you know, I can, I don't wanna, Ho oh, oh. ho! Isn't that nifty? Oops. King was flying on my arms. Not a good look. Alrighty, well, spotlight on yours truly. Alright, let's uh, turn that around so you have anything else to look at. Wow. Da da da! <laughs> I can't believe I'm feeling the interior of a building that is not open to the public. That is crazy. <laughs> and if I drop, kick myself over the, uh, trip myself over the vacuum cleaner, it's going to be a heavy thud. I don't want to hear that any more than you do. I'm just looking at these here. See, there's one on this side and one on that side. Um, huh. I'm thinking what they're, they're used for. Um, making sure it stays closed, making sure it stays in a position that you want it in. To hold a storm window in place. I don't know. My audience always tends to know a lot more than I do, so how fabulous is that? So, why Kingsland Bay? Early records and maps refer to this bay by the names of previous owners, Heron and Holly, but these names never became permanent fixtures. The name Kingsland Bay displaced both. Abram Kingsland and his son Hiram 
purchased the property in 1860. Before this time, they had been long-term residents in Ferrisburg and known in the community. Upon gaining ownership of the stone house and its surrounding acreage, they repaired the structure and made it their home farm. The Kingslands were the first owners to establish a personal residence in the house, choosing not to use it for business or rental. The family lived in the house for 11 years until health prompted Hiram Kingsland to leave farming. Though the Kingsland had a short tenure at the stone house, it still resulted in the bay gaining a new name after the family's departure, Kingsland Bay. Kingsland Bay is a rocky shored, well-protected bay on the Vermont border of Lake Champlain. The history of this region did not just begin with the European discovery of this lake in 1609. Native Americans left their mark on the land and left behind artifacts substantiating their presence. Archaeological evidence in this region supports the notion this acreage was occupied by Native Americans as early as 6,000 years ago. After the American Revolution, settlers arrived in the area known as Ferrisburg. About 1785, Gideon Hawley and his family settled on the largest segment of land around Kingsland Bay. Descendants worked the land until 1849. During the War of 1812, militia units quartered themselves on the Hawley Farm, providing an outpost to Commodore Thomas McDonough's Virgin's Shipyard. Smaller adjacent land parcels were owned over the years by Roger A. Hearn of New York and Samuel Strong of Virgin's. This is a newspaper article. That's much too long to read to you, um, but uh, perhaps the photograph will be clear enough that you can read it on your own. And then oof, this one here. The map of Ferrisburg. Oh, those are always so cool. You see the, I think those are houses that are numbered, or plots of land anyway that are numbered. Uh, what does it say? Is it legible? Laid down. The direction and under the inspection of John Bishop. Yada, yada, yada. I'm trying to read this portion right here. I'd say good luck with that. But, uh, and uh, this is a topographical map. I don't know if I've ever seen one uh, like this on a, on a wall. Um, it's Lake Champlain and uh, the land that surrounds it. Interesting. Well, and again, let's look at the magnificent depth of the walls. And uh, let me just back up so you can see the elliptical window there. Uh, I'm really just taking it in. Um, and the view is gorgeous too. All right, well, this is Patricia, and I'm traveling for history. I just saw these things over here, too. Every wall has something on it. It's really fascinating. And there's a map of Ferrisburg up there. All right. Well, as I started to say, this is Patricia, and I'm traveling for history. Thanks so much for coming with me today. I really enjoyed coming inside to film inside. Thank you again to Houston. Uh, for opening the place up. She asked if I'd like to go inside. She, oh, yeah, please. <laughs> I'm not going to turn that down, people. I'm just not. Um, so, uh, this has been a real treat. Hope you've enjoyed it, too. Um, I'm Patricia, traveling for history, and until I see you again, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.